Greetings once again, my fellow Star Trek fans, and I'd like to welcome you to another video. And this is going to be the latest shipment for the USS Enterprise. Not this lovely lady, but for the NCC 1701D. This is for the build the USS Enterprise. I'm very excited. I just got the latest shipment in. Um, matter of fact, the mailman just left. And I'm very excited, so why don't we go over to the desk and I'll show you guys what's in the latest shipment of the Fan Home build, the USS Enterprise, NCC 1701D. So this is the latest shipment from Fan Home, and it actually says D'Agostini on the box. Let's open this up and check out what's inside. We've got the latest. This is issue buildup number 60, uh, 26, excuse me. This is F419KTS026. So, let's see. Ooh. We're going to go over everything real quick and then I'll unbox everything for you. So, we have issues 102. One oh one one hundred and finally ninety nine. So this shipment we break a hundred with shipment number twenty six. And you can see the lovely model of the Enterprise D. So let's put the box aside now. So let's take a look. We got Star Trek The Next Generation, build the USS Enterprise NCC 1701D. And again, this is issue number 26. And in this issue, we've got the ship parts, the assembly, the episode guides, and I love the episode guides. So moving over, you can see we're going to start the parts list now. And stage 99, you can see a frame that's going to go on the primary hull. And this looks like where the battle section is going to fit in eventually. And I'm not quite sure what those are. We've got some wires, some screws. And stage 100, we got another section of the hull, escape pods, and we got some lights. And it looks like another phaser array. And you can see the parts list. When we move over, we got stage 101 parts, more sections for the windows, the backings. We have some of the wires. You can see the parts list and 102. More. We got more of the hull. The outer piece you can see right there. More escape pods. And it looks like battery compartment or power supply you can see a switch over there and the parts list so now we go into the assembly you can see this is stage the structure that secures the saucer to the battle section begins to take shape how awesome is that and you can see the section that we're going to be working on and again, we got the key. Red is used for screws, arrows, and connection points. The yellow is for the new parts in each step. The gray shows the assembly so far, and the blue shows the illuminated parts. You can see we're going to take the, the lights. We're going to get them ready to use. We're going to separate the leads so they can fit into the place that they need to go. And you can see where they're going to go on to the frame. And we're going to secure those with AM screws. And look at, you can see how we're going to put it into the hull now. That's really going to close a gap. And she's going to really start to close in and come together. The AM screw is going to hold the light 
in this section. You can see the frame. And one of my favorite parts of the build is testing out the lights. On to stage 100 assembly. You can see the escape pods going in the outer part of the hull. This is going to be held in place with the IM screws and one AM screw. Moving on, we're going to put some windows in. We've got the backings and the phaser array. And you guys doing the build, you know we've done lots of those. And we're going to put the windows in to this piece. The backing is going to be held on with AP screws. And you can see where we're going to put the wires in for the LEDs and how we're going to put them into the circuit board or PCB board. And then we're going to secure the lights with AP screws before we put it into the hull. And then we're going to bring them together <clears throat> we're going to make another section. So you can see this section that we're going to do and eventually we'll do the escape pods on the edge. Going back to the bottom of the secondary hull, you can see where we had left off in shipment 25. And we're going to secure it in place with the BP screws now. And on that section, we're going to put in some escape pods. And look, we're going to bring it together on the bottom of the secondary hull. Moving on, you can see the pieces of tape that we're going to use to secure the wires for the LEDs. Arrange the cables at the other end of the assembly as shown and secure them with four more stickers, 101K. We're going to move on to 102 assembly now, and we're going to do that same familiar edge of the primary hull. We're going to put in the escape pods, and you can see the, uh, the outer rim. We're going to put that in place, and of course, as we've been doing up to this point, we've got the false escape pod that's going to cover the screw. We move on, you can see what we're going to be doing a little bit more for the batteries. Take the battery box nut and slot into the matching recess in the battery box. Then place the battery box nut cover over the nut and screw with two AP screws. You remember we had done that for the uh, battle section. And this is going to be wired into the PCB board in the secondary hull. You can see how that's going to go. We're going to put that in. So, this is really starting to take effect. I love the fact that we went over 100 now in the issues. Um, we're going to bring everything together, the bottom section. You can see how we're going to put it into the PCB board. And look, we're going to actually put it onto the frame. Moving on, you can see the areas around the deflector dish. We've got to put those little lights in. And my favorite part is testing the lights. And we got to actually put all those in place and look at all of the screws. We have DP screws, CM screws, and there's quite a bit of those that are going to secure it to the secondary hull frame. And that's it. Now we move on to one of my favorite parts of the magazine. We actually go into the episode guide, and this is a really great episode. This one is titled Relics. It's episode 6.4, premiered October 12th of 1992. After surviving in a transporter beam for 75 years, engineer Montgomery Scott is a man out of time. But with the help of Jody LaForge, he can still work miracles to save the USS Enterprise. The next generation unashamedly celebrates the original series in his fan favorite episode. And this is when he's, Mr. Scott is on the hollow deck and he asks for the Constitution class enterprise that he served on to begin his career. Moving on, you can see Jonathan Frakes, Commander Riker, 
and James Doohan, Mr. Scott, with first-time Star Trek director Alexander Singer. You cannot change the laws of physics, I told him. Scotty quotes himself to Jordy LaForge. So we have more of the information from that episode. And look at the pictures. The bridge. Love it. Three views of a holodeck bridge set assembled for relics. Among the newly created elements were some authentic original series buttons that Greg Jean had been given by the show's special effects supervisor, Jim Rugg. Other classic elements used in the episode were the transporter Sparkle, which Dan Curry located as a film strip in the library of original series effects house. Cinema research and the accompanying sound effect which co-producer Wendy Noose found in Paramount's own archive. And we got the little sketches. Extracts from Dan Curry's detailed storyboard for the holodeck scene. The final frame sp uh, specifies neutral use of the newly built set to represent another part of the bridge. Just because something's old doesn't mean you throw it away. Jody LaForge. Moving on, this is titled The Genolian Journey. How Scotty's ship went from the 23rd century shuttle to docking upside down on Deep Space Nine. Designed and built by Bill George and John Goodson at ILM, the SD-103 type shuttle was the only new ship miniature built for the undiscovered country and appears in just one shot approaching space dock. Greg Jean's modifications included new, two, new decals given the registry as NCC-2010 and misspelling the ship's name as the USS Janolan. This error was not legible on screen until the episode was remastered in 2014. This is a really cool picture of the Dyson Sphere. You can see how immense that would have been, the shot and the filming model. The doorway section of the vast modular Dyson Sphere exterior model created by Gregory Jean Incorporated. Aye, an actual Dyson Sphere, Scotty. So moving on to the next episode, Schisms. And this is a really interesting episode. This is episode 6.5 and premiered October 19th of 1992. When crew members start to experience extreme tiredness and other strange symptoms, they began to suspect alien abduction as the cause. The next generation taps into alien abduction fears, one whole year ahead of the X-Files. In between playing Bowley and Barber, Mr. Mott, and Ensign Rowe in Schisms, Ken Thorley also played a gambling seaman in Time's Arrow. Morning? I just went to bed. Riker suffers from sleep deprivation. You can see the sketch. One of several detailed plans made by visual effects supervisor Dan Curry before filming the levitation stunt. This episode is titled True Q, and I love it how they're walking on the outside of the Enterprise. This is episode 6.6 .6 and premiered October 26th of 1992. A brilliant young intern on board the Enterprise keeps her extraordinary powers a secret until Q arrives to reveal the truth about her non-human heritage. The first Q episode of season six was also Rene Echevarria's debut as a full-time staff writer. As an expert in humanity, I was sent to investigate. Q sets out his credentials for assessing Amanda. Looking at the pictures on the bottom, prior to the sixth season, the only dogs seen in The Next Generation were in season two's The Child. 
True Q makes up for this omission with 10 Labrador Retriever puppies. Top left, an Irish setter. Bottom left, a brief cameo by another puppy in a scene with Amanda. And Q, the latter dog was the focus of deleted scene left, which Troy asks Amanda to babysit while its owner is away. We move on to another episode. This one is titled Rascals. This is episode 6.7, premiered November 2nd of 1992. A transporter accident turns four crew members into children. This was a pretty amusing episode. This child-led caper was pitched by a father and daughter and directed by the son of Spock. Though Miles returns for the series finale, the wider O'Brien family makes its last Star Trek The Next Generation appearance in Rascals as a result of their movie to Star Trek, of their move to Star Trek Deep Space Nine, excuse me. You remember um, O'Brien was having trouble relating to his wife because she was in a child's body. I assure you I am Captain Picard, a 12-year-old captain tries to assert his authority. Adam Nimoy spent a lot of time working with David Tristan Birkin to perfect his performance as Picard. And that is everything that is in issue number 26, the magazine, the Star Trek The Next Generation. So I think what we can do now is we can go ahead and check out all the little goodies that we got in the issues. All right, let's check out issue number 99. pieces at the end. Gotta be careful for these little pieces. These are actually the little brackets that are going to hold the LEDs in place. So we've got one, two, three, we got five of these. Let's put these where they're not gonna get lost. And let's see, we've got a packet of JM screws. And a packet of the FM screws. And we've got the LEDs. And these are the ones with the four pins. And we've got two of those set for the bottom of the secondary hull. And we have one with the two-pronged clip. And let's see, uh, there's a couple more packets of screws. I almost forgot, because there's a lot of screws that are gonna hold the frame in place. We've got the BM screws. And we've got the AM screws. And let's take a look at this frame. This is metal. And you can see where this is gonna go and where the, the battle section or the dorsal hull is gonna fit in. Because I was wondering how they were gonna secure it. So it would be interesting to see. And that's everything that's in issue number 99. Moving on to issue 100, we break the three digits.
All right, let's check out this. We got the phaser array. And beautiful detail. Um, let's see, more screws. Packet of DP screws. And we got the backings. I think these are the backings for the windows. And speaking of the windows, we've got half a tree with the room lights that are going to be on and a full tree of the room lights that are going to be off. And let's see, we got some more escape pods. And this is probably going to be a backing for the escape pods. And what are these? We have these, I'm not quite sure what these are. They look like they could be lights. And we got the backing for the escape pods and we've got screws. We've got IM screws as well as AM screws. And we've got some windows that are going to go into the bottom or into the secondary hull. And any really screws with that. Nope. Just last section, we have the part of the, part of the hull. Hopefully you guys can see the Aztec in. The escape pods are going to go and the windows are just going to actually look like that. Beautiful. Is that everything? Yep. That's everything. That was an issue number 100. <clears throat> Moving on to issue number 101. Looks like we got a lot of lights here. Let me show you the backing first. This is going to be the backing to reflect the LEDs to light up the windows. And let's see, look at all these lights. We've got LED leads that have two LEDs. Oh, let me just separate them. So we've got one light with the longer wire and we have the two-pronged alligator clip that's going to be attaching to the PCB board and then we have this one's interesting four um, pronged clip and you can see how it kind of branches off into two different sections and each has two different LED lights And then we have the two LED wire leads with the two bulbs and the clips. So there's a lot of lights in this issue. And to light, we're going to be lighting a lot of windows. So when it comes to the windows, we have two trees with the room lights that are off and one tree with the room lights that are on. We've got lots of screws. We got FM screws. And we've got the AP screws. Oh, we got another pack of screws here. I think these are the yep, these are the BP screws. And we have a bunch of escape pods because we have some that actually have to go into the bottom of the secondary hull. Um, we got more backings for the windows. And these are the stickers that they were talking about to hold the wires in place. So it's basically like black tape. It's gonna hold the wires in. And lastly, we have the outer section of the hull with the windows and let's see if you can see we have it the uh, aztec -ing on that is that everything yeah that was everything in issue number 101 and lastly we have issue number 102 
All right, we got a lot of little pieces in this one too. We've got the little screw cover, the little escape pod. It's going to cover the screw. And we've got these little yellow pieces that are going to go on the sides of the deflector dish. And is that the only, yeah, those are the only tiny little pieces, so we got to be careful for those. And we've got the backing for the escape pods. And we have a little nut and bolt for the battery pack. And speaking of the battery pack, this is kind of like what we did for the, um, although this is going to be a button battery. And you can see the little switch right there. Um, this was another pack of screws. These are DP. FM and IM screws and let's see this looks like the cover the battery cover um, we got the outer rim of the saucer the primary hull and we have more escape pods we got two trees of the escape pods and this is a little section for the battery compartment and a little AM screws as well as a CM screws. Um, let's see, is that every? No, we got another packet of screws, and these are the AP screws. I think that's all the packets of screws. And lastly, we got another section of the primary hull. You can see where the escape pods are going to go. And hopefully you guys can see the Aztec in. Beautiful. And that was everything that was in issue number 102. So, that was everything in issue number 26. So we finally broke 100. We've got issues number 99, 100, 101, and 102. So... We can actually start to see the finish line. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed this quick video of the unboxing. And the next video, we're going to be putting it all together. Um, I won't be going over what's in the uh, shipment because that's what this video is for. So my friends, until the build, I'll talk to you guys real soon. And take care.